good. The mic seems to be working. So, I'm hoping by the end of this talk that I will convince all of you that governance is important. So, here's my best shot at it. So, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Marty Dahlberg. Uh, I am the senior coordinator for Wolfware, because just like Cal Poly, we have to brand things with our own name, and we're the Wolfpack. So, we'll do another little Wolfpack. And I am part of Delta, along with Lou and Jeff. And we are the learning technology applications side of things. And Scott, sorry. Think about that. Um, so, Delta is a division of the Provost's office. And I bring this up because there are two basic ways for people to organize their LMS um, structure. One is to have it as part of their IT uh, group, and the other is to have it as part of more their teaching and learning with faculty or a separate um, vice provost for academic technology or something to have it separated from the IT functions. I actually think, you know, and I know that you know most of you don't have the ability to change the structure of your organization, but uh, we have found and we've done the research and, and actually wrote a book chapter about um, that structure and governance and that groups that use, have governance that's outside of or that run their um, LMS outside of the IT functions usually do a better job at meeting the needs of their um, constituency. And if for no other reason, then they're able to devote the resources and the attention to it and focus on it. Because we all know that when the student information systems or PeopleSoft or uh, email goes down, the LMS is going to get short trip. They're not going to be paying attention to it. They're not going to be maintaining it when they have to take care of or put out more urgent fires. So, what is governance? Well, I'd like to think about um, kind of the problems that we have as administrators or you know people who run um, uh, learning management systems and learning technologies. And faculty members are, are accustomed to being in control of their classroom. Right? I mean, that's you know, one of the essential functions of classroom management. Um, we are accustomed to being in control of our LMS, or running, running the show and, and you know, setting the rules. Now, I'm looking at it from a 20,000 foot view down. I'm doing what's best for the institution. For, I, I take all these 11 colleges that we have, all the different classes, and I mold it into one view or one frame as what's kind of the biggest, best compromise for the whole university. Faculty obviously have very different thoughts about that. They want to get what's best for their class. And so inherently, you have a conflict or tension in this relationship. Already, you are their enemy because you're not putting that plug in that they need in order to teach their class or that they want. Now, we have 2,000 faculty, 2,500 faculty, something like that, 110,000 enrollments, you know, 40,000 students. Um, we can't just go willy-nilly installing plugins, you know, just on the whim of one person. So, you know, there were certainly issues. So, you know, we're trying to meet the needs of a large and diverse constituency. We're also trying to give them some representation. We want them to be able to feel like they have a voice, like they actually do have control. Um, we need to make sure that we have a viewpoint, you know, that, that, that we're understanding the viewpoint of the different colleges. Um, our College of Vet Med is very interested in competency-based education, and they're, you know, pushing us to move forward with that. Uh, I don't know that engineering has really thought about it much. You know, but we, we need to have representatives from all our stakeholders to make sure that we're understanding what's actually needed and where the future of this technology needs to go. So, as I mentioned at the bottom, I will frequently get people who want to, um, you know, impolitely uh, tear me a new one, if you will, because they're unhappy about something that we're doing. And the easiest way to deal with those sorts of critics is to invite them to come and serve as representatives on committees. And one of two things either happens, either they come and they understand the bigger picture, or they get quiet because they don't want to volunteer to spend the time. So either way, I'm able to kind of calm down somebody that's having a problem. So, just 
simple little chart, quick little visual for you to see. You know, that's our governance structure. Pretty simple and straightforward, right? <laughs> um, basically, we have, if you look at the pink layers, and I'm colorblind, so if I'm getting the colors wrong, uh, tell me, but I think it's the pink is the learning management system steering and content capture steering. Those are our two decision-making bodies. Um, and they have three subcommittees that feed into them. We try to look at things from three different ways. Uh, customer needs and policies, so that's typically made up of um, administrators from different, uh, IT administrators from different colleges and different units on campus. We try to have one from every large unit that's using our um, uh, learning management system and learning technologies. We have a best practices of support, uh, which Scott heads as, as uh, one of the co-chairs, that handles the qualitative things, um, kind of how to support people, pedagogy, best practices within the, uh, the LMS, what should we be doing to promote uh, and help and assist teaching. And then we have a technical concerns committee, which is uh, co-chaired by Jeff. And that's looking at, you know, what's feasible. When the other two committees say it would be really nice if we could do this, he, he's the one who kind of reigns in our enthusiasm and says, uh, you know, that's a great idea, but it will never work because we don't have, you know, $15 million worth of supercomputing equipment, you know, or what have you. So he's the reality check to make sure that uh, things are working properly. Sometimes he says it's easy. Yeah, he's actually a great guy to work with. So, you know, and then... This is available online, and I'll actually show you where you can get it on our website. You know, I have a whole list of other resources, so I'm not going to go over the rest of the chart. But uh, how do you promote transparency? So how do I get – I want people to understand the decisions that we make and why we make the decisions. Because typically when you explain it to a faculty member, I mean, I am the – I'm the master at saying no and getting someone to thank me. So that's, that's part of my job, is that, is, is that I have to explain to a faculty member, well, I understand that you want to integrate this book publisher's thing, blah, 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 but it's not FERPA compliant, this is why we can't do it, you know, or whatever other issues. So I need to be able to, to do that with, with um, you know, faculty members, I need to be able to explain, we need to be able to get the word out to why we make the decisions that we do. It's not just an arbitrary decision that's made somewhere in a little closed room, and then we issue the edict and go. If we do that, over time, we will become hated and reviled on campus. I mean, it's pretty much a given. So you need to get people involved. We also need to actually get their input in these decisions. So it's very important that you get a good representative sample of stakeholders across campus. Um, I will tell you it's very difficult to get faculty and student representation, and I struggle with that constantly. I'm not going to, you know, um, uh, sugarcoat anything here. Um, so I, that's why I regularly, whenever somebody engages me because they want something, I will frequently ask them if they would like to participate, and that's how we keep our um, faculty slots open. Um, you need to hold regular meetings. So many times I've gone to things where people claim to look for input, and they are telling you what they want to do and just looking for validation. And if you do that with people, they will very quickly realize that it's a waste of time. It's, it's a fruitless exercise. So it's very important to go in there with an agenda of things that you want to talk about, but not with the decisions and the agenda. You need to allow people to discuss, you know, go over what, the, you know, what their feelings are, uh, have a little, you know, hopefully have some healthy debate about it, and then make a decision. Obviously, you need to get to the decision-making uh, stage. So there are other cases where people will argue and discuss and talk, you know, ad nauseum for three months to revisit issues. We're very much trying to be of the mold where we make a decision and then we move on it. You know, it's, I'd rather make a good decision than spend forever to make a great one because you just need to keep moving. You need to get things done. So we try very hard to solicit feedback from the community at large. We have a few mechanisms for that, which I'll talk about. And we try to get new perspectives from people. We try to bring fresh blood in as often as possible. So some of the things that we do, 
uh, you know, it's about communication. It is really, really difficult to communicate with your campus, with faculty. Okay, they're busy. To give you an example, I send out a direct email once or twice a semester. We, the three go out per year, beginning of the fall, beginning of the spring, and kind of when we're rolling over to the next year. And I've gotten people asking me to unsubscribe. Now, this is crucial information that they need to know to use the tools to do their job. And they're asking me to unsubscribe. I found out that I was remarkably successful because 52% of them opened the email. Now, what about the other 48? <laughs> so, a little bit of a problem. So we also, you know, we have a few different channels. We have that. We have uh, what we call Delta Wire articles, which is kind of a, a blog that we keep. Uh, we have knowledge-based articles to help them with, you know, individual topics, more of a just-in-time type thing. Trainings, custom trainings, how to videos. And we also have big, ugly, yellow messages with red type that appear that they have to actually dismiss called notifications that appear right at the front of our portal so that we have a log. I could actually go back and look and say, well, you clicked, you got this message on 7 17 2008 you know, whatever, at such and such a time, as a way of trying to kind of give them or make them more a little more mindful of the fact that they need to actually pay attention to these communications. So, if you are rapidly running out of time. So we've had a number of successes. One of the things that we do, um, you know, because everybody feels Moodle's open source, we can change it, we can do anything we want. You know, and Lou and I, several years ago, did uh, a talk called Free as in Puppies, Not as in Beer. And the idea being that, you know, Moodle is free, but there's a cost associated with it once you get it for free in terms of maintenance, updating, customization, things like that. So we try very hard not to modify core and to look at both the importance of breadth and depth when we consider a feature request. And so anybody in the community, in our NC State community, that can log into our system can put in a feature request. So students, faculty, what have you. Um, what's it? Not yet. Okay. So we also have a variety of SOPs that we, the committees have agreed upon as far as retention, as far as, you know, the process for feature requests, um, you know, a whole host of other ones. And so... We work very hard to build a shared vision of where we need to be and what we're doing. You know, we actively solicit that input. And we've gotten a lot of positive feedback from faculty. I mean, they're much happier now, I think, than they were 10 years ago when we, or nine years ago when we first got this effort started. I think, you know, this is admittedly anecdotal. I only have a very small amount of data to back that up. But the general climate seems to be that they feel like we're responding. You know, we do have occasional problems with uh, marketing from companies like Canvas. Or, you know, uh, we've gotten a lot of, you know, people, you know, faculty, the other faculty members, and, you know, we get questions about that. And so we're actually working on those types of communications to explain why we're sticking with Moodle. Uh, there are a couple of downsides. And unfortunately, I'm running out of time, so I can't really talk too much about those. But it takes a lot of time. Okay, it's a lot of time and effort to spend the time to communicate with people. It's a lot easier to just expediently make a decision and move on and, and go. Um, it also takes additional resources. Uh, occasionally, they're going to drag you to a place where you don't want to go. And you know, if it's consensus and it can be done, even though you felt it might be more expedient to do it a certain way, you may have to go and 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 go with what your governance body suggests. Um, it could also be very, very slow. I mean, you may have to wait for another meeting. Uh, one of our failings right now is feature requests can take up to two years before we finally do something, decide on them, and actually do something with them. And I think we've had a couple that have lasted longer than that. So there, you can actually be sending a message that, yeah, great, tell us, but we don't care about you. So. There are dangers associated with this, and we're actually changing our process to try to speed that up. So, the resources for you, uh, our portal, and I know people hate that portal word, but I, I, it seems to work, is wolfware.ncsu.edu. 
and these slides are uploaded so you can just download and take a look. And we also have all of our SOPs, the governance structure, membership, uh, at wolfware.ncsu.edu slash SOPs, or you can just go to Wolfware and go all the way to the bottom of the page and click on governance. And you are free to take, steal, copy, paste, do whatever you want. Anything that we can do to help you promote, um, you know, better governance or, you know, better organization and management of your learning technologies, we'd be ha I'd be happy to talk to you about. So, that's all I got. <laughs>